Hello everybody and welcome, this is ZDS here and welcome back to my old Let's Play channel. If you guys are finding me on this channel first, be be aware that I actually have a main channel just titled ZDS Odyrus and uh, that will be linked probably in the description or just somewhere on the channel page. So, due to popular demand on a couple of posts I posted on my main channel, you guys wanted me to continue the Let's Plays on the Let's Play channel and also... You wanted me to do Pokemon X Gale of Darkness as the game I do start with, which is awesome. I'm very glad you guys chose this, because this is, um, as I will continue to say many times throughout the video series, my favorite Pokemon game of all time. The reason is simply because of all the nostalgia I have for this game. XD is not a perfect game by far, it's just one of the more fun ones to me. Plus, let's be clear here too. This and its pre and its uh, um, predecessor, not predecessor. This and Colosseum are the only two uh, 3D Pokemon games on a console. Until of course we got Sword and Shield and Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. But these games can't. This game came out in 2005. So between 2005 and 2018, we didn't have a single 3D game on a home console for Pokemon. At least the RPG ones. There was Battle Revolution for the, for the Wii, but that was different. That was more like a stadium game where you provided your own Pokemon. Now just as a heads up, while I'm going through this sequence here, I will be using some action replay codes. I will always list the code in the description of whatever video I am doing the action replay code for. And I will also be uh, using PikaHex, which I will also inform you guys, every time I use PikaHex in between videos, or if I have to suddenly pause a video in the middle and use PikaHex after that. And fourthly, the videos are going to be no longer than 24 to 25 minutes. I don't want to make them a gigantic hour-long adventure series. So that means that there will be a fuck ton more videos than necessary, but it'll also mean that you guys don't have to sit through my commentary for half an hour. I might even keep some of them as short as 15 minutes. I figure that's more better for, or that's much better for like a bite-sized sort of thing, you know. You'll also hear a lot of clicking like this. That's just my controller that I'm using. And there might be some vocal dips and stuff like that. I am currently bedbound due to a spinal injury that I have that I have uh, suffered from, and uh, therefore I have to have the microphone on my bed since I can't sit in a chair. So as usual, it's obviously a male EV. But what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to pop out Pika Hex right now. So I'm going to save the game, and it will overwrite my old save file, but I already backed that up, so it's not a big deal. And I will see you guys back in just a moment. Okay, that only took a moment. Let me go ahead and go over what I just did, though. So I turned EV female, because that's just my preference. I gave her a modest nature, and maxed out her special attack and defense, because I'm going to turn her into a Vaporeon soon. And I gave her hidden power... And it's an electric type hidden power, since that works best for Vaporeon in this game. Mm. I'm also incredibly thirsty. Anyway, beside that, <sighs> only, thing I, only other thing I did was I fucked with the items. As you see here, I gave myself 100 full restore of max releases and max revive, simply because I don't like wasting time. Uh, I didn't give myself any Pokeballs, but I did give myself every single TM in the game. Now, granted, TM in the game, so you don't have the HM for Surf, Waterfall, Strength, Cut, Flash, Rock Smash, or Fly. And I also get myself a, a thousand of every berry, because why not? But anywho, let's finally get this adventure going. Oh, goodness. Hold on a second. Okay. Since I'm using a GameCube emulator, I had to go ahead and change the little widescreen fix. Also, I decided to put my uh, game at a higher, an unthrottled, basically, for speed. Since this game can get pretty slow sometimes. When I'm not thinking about anything and I'm just watching it play out, it's fine. But uh, when I'm playing it and I have to be conscious of what I'm doing, ow, oof, as in for a video. It's a little bit different than that way. Alright, now we gotta go downstairs and get our PDA. Pokemon Digital Assistant. 
Open the door. Go into our room. Oh, what's that on the fucking table? Something on the desk. And it's mine. Alright. Also grab this item real quick. Just three potions. Helps you out in the beginning. Now we're going to go back upstairs here. And go and talk to this monkey. This dude hanging under a desk. Ah! You startled me! Oh, hi. It's you, Kevin. It's me, Adon. You looking for Jovi? We're supposed to be playing hide-and-seek right now, but isn't she around anywhere? Well, maybe she's gone off to Dr. Kaminko's manor. Map. Jovi is it in our game of hide-and-seek. I wish you'd find me soon. My back is starting to hurt. <laughs> I know the feeling, brother. Then you leave, though. This, this fucking dude comes and talks to you, saying about big news in the fucking room. It's just the news is reporting on the, uh, the SS Libra being captured. Or going missing. <sighs> that cargo ship is actually what is holding all of the Pokemon that will be eventually become the Shadow Pokemon that we'll be catching. So, real quick, uh, you can actually go ahead and battle this gentleman right here, I believe. Right now, if I could talk to him. Hey, Kevin, I heard about you. Sounds like you've been racking up outstanding scores in the battle sim. But instead of that virtual reality stuff... But instead of that virtual reality shit, how about we have a real fucking battle for a change? <laughs> I'll be happy to battle with you anytime. Alright, that's the spirit. Go. Let's get it on. He's the first trainer you can legitimately fight. And he does last primarily for the entire game, too. I'm going to see if this does more damage. Yep, one hit KO. You see what I mean, though, by the battles being faster? I Oh, right, I forgot. I also gave Eevee a lucky egg. I'll be giving every one of my Pokemon that I use in my party a lucky egg just to make grinding easier. So we'll head to Dr. Kaminko's house. Fun fact, uh, I actually originally bought Pokemon Exegetal Darkness as my first console Pokemon game. And the only games I had experience with up to that point were Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2. So I thought that perhaps clicking on one of the, that, you know, Coliseum or Exegetal Darkness would be similar to the Coliseum games in Battle Structure. Or the Stadium games in Battle Structure, which of course is not the case. And I bought my mom buy this first, and I was such a little pussy that I got scared of this specific area and told my mom to get to take it back. She wasn't very happy about that, but she obliged and got me Coliseum instead. And when I was playing Coliseum, I was having a freaking blast. So once I finished Coliseum, I asked my mom if we could get against Eagle Darkness again. And that pretty much sealed my fate twisted around this wonderful game. I mean, the game is definitely not objectively the best. In fact, many people would say that it's one of the worst Pokemon games. And trust me, I've heard that before. But to me, because it was my first experience as, as an... Actually, not even just as an RPG Pokemon game, but my first experience with an RPG to begin with, actually. Because I didn't end up getting Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky and... Or Explorers... No. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Red Rescue Team until about a year after I got uh, XD and Coliseum, so... This is my first ever RPG and first ever Pokemon RPG. Because I had the N64 at the time, but I had Stadium 1 and 2, I had Perfect Dark, I had uh, freaking Super Smash Bros. I didn't have any role-playing games. I had mostly fighting games and stadium games. But my favorite genre of all time is RPGs because of the length in which you can play them. If I'm not playing an RPG, I'm typically trying to play a game to beat a speedrun record, like I did with my Metroid Prime uh, 2 speedrun and my Metroid Prime 1 speedrun. You can check those out on my main channel. Shameless plug. Anywho. So now we got her, and we got to go see Dr. Kane. To find Dr. Kane, you got to go upstairs. And then you got to talk to what I can only assume is your grandfather, which is this guy. You talk to him, you go back downstairs, and suddenly he's now in the room. And in here, Dr. Crane... I said Kane, didn't I? Ow! Ah, oh, got my back. Ugh. Again, I apologize for, like, extra weird noises. Back pain is no joke, but I need to keep myself occupied. So this is now where we get the Sacred Snug Machine... Fully updated to fit my weak, weirdly shaped arm. 
It's like his arms are made out of black and red Twizzlers while his hands are made out of bear claws. <sighs> Definitely not properly proportioned, but that's fine with me. And then it gives me some bowels. Lots of bowels. Alright, where are we going? What's going on? It's terrible! Some strange men came barging in and took off with the director! Don't worry, I will fight them as an 11 year old boy! They knocked out a bunch of people. I love how Pineco, even when it's on its side, it's still doing its idle animation. So these guys are going to be taking the director here to somewhere. But before they do anything, I gotta get rid of this yellow-headed motherfucker. With his shadow, Teddy Ursa. Teddy Ursa could potentially be a final member of my team, although I don't know for sure yet. I already know two of my final members off the bat because I never go through one of my games without those two. Obviously, whatever evolution I choose is one of them. Hmm. But then there's also a Shadow Ralts. It's the 19th capturable Shadow Pokemon. And naturally, seeing as Gardevoir is my favorite Pokemon, I have to catch that Ralts. How I'm going to make her really powerful, though, without using hacked moves, I don't know, because she does better with the elemental punches for stab and stuff. Oh, I could make my way around it. I could work around it. Oh. I know that you can teach it Icy Wind. Take the professor away. Don't worry, Jovi. I'm sure Professor Crane will be okay. <laughs> We've contacted the police and proper authority for Professor Crane. They should let us know if they see if they did if they. Da, 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 da. Still don't believe this is happening. Okay. Isn't the only Shadow Pokemon that was made? When the Purified Chamber is completed, we will be able to save many Shadow Pokemon at the same time. But Professor Crane is crucial to this op is to this project. Without him, there's nothing we can do. And zoom in on the mom with the terminating eyes. Eyes the size of fucking, I don't know, baseballs. I mean, just look at the fucking weird proportions of that model. I don't know exactly if there was a lot of official Pokemon staff on the same team developing XD and Coliseum. But considering XD and Coliseum was the first time they ever made player characters into a 3D environment for Pokemon... I suppose I can excuse the really, really weird proportions on some of these characters. I have to say, probably the only most, of the best, of, uh, the ones that have the weirdest proportions are actually, like, uh, the frickin' main characters. Like you, your sister, your mom. Everyone else pretty much looks normal. Oh, God. This is a holdover from Coliseum I did not like. In Coliseum, you could periodically find folders that gave you information on Shadow Pokemon. In XD, this dude literally just stops you to give you two of them. Or three, I don't remember which. Nope, two. And then when you come back, he'll give you the other three. Why he doesn't just give you all of them at once, I'll never understand. But hold on, I forgot something over here. Also, if you go over here to the left, you'll see there's an item box. This will contain an antidote. Two of them. Just in case you come across anything that poisons your Pokemon. So this is actually going to be more of a guide slash walkthrough rather than just a let's play. So next we'll head to Gachion Port. There are three Shadow Pokemon we can capture here, as well as getting the Evolution Stone for our Eevee. Now I already said I'm going to choose Vaporeon, so that's pretty obvious, but of course you can pick from the other four Evolutions. It just takes time. And smack. Now this fucking roided out Mohawk motherfucker is a at up uh, absolute douchebag. A little kid, who I can only assume is like eight years old, runs into this twenty something year old man, and then he's basically threatening to kick her ass. Just like what are you, a gorilla? God, getting a better look at his model reminds me of Duke Nukem for some reason. He's like the arrogant Pokemon version of Duke Nukem. And what's with the midriff bearing shirt, dude? I mean, that dude's just... Oh, God. Oh, and uh, these three are obviously not the main villains. Of course not. It's not like they look evil or anything. Yeah, I ain't worrying about it. I'm gonna spoil all that shit. These three guys are the main three villains. 
There's three or four other villains, I believe, we haven't come across yet. I think it might just be three. But he shows him what's what with a psychic to the fucking goose's face. So these three are actually in charge of the Shadow Pokemon plan, of course. And they know that they are, you know, they gave him one. Maybe not them specifically, but someone in their underlings gave it to him. And they're like, you don't, you don't use Shadow Pokemon un improperly against people. We only did what needed to be done. Nothing more. And yes, get used to that similar voice when I do his speaking lines later. So first, you gotta go to the left here and, of course, get interrupted literally three seconds after we just got interrupted by something. Now, these two people have almost no significance. The little tiny bit of significance that the mother has won't be apparent until a few more hours into the game. Because she, after you ask, she'll let you know, I believe. She'll, like, message you down the PDA that she wants to interview you because she's a reporter. And then you answer a section of questions, and then those questions will give you the option of knowing, like... Uh, basically, if you answer the questions right, you'll get an amulet coin. If you don't, you'll get something else. I'll take care of that when the time comes. But first, we'll go over here to the bike shop here. And talk to this old sailor guy. Hi, did you want something here? The shopkeeper's out right now. He said something about having to go out to Dr. Kameen... Uh, what was it now? Well, to, to that doctor's manor is where he went. He said his grandson, Purr, will be back from repairing the rotating bridges, so I'm supposed to mind the shop until then. But I don't know where anything is or how to ring up a sale or anything. I have no clue what to do. Makes me wonder why they chose you to do it. So it doesn't matter, though. It's really quiet here. I'm getting awfully bored, really. Clearly, you're talking to a 12-year-old. If you'd like, how about you help me while some, while some time away? Oh, I haven't heard that phrasing in a while. I got a tale to tell that you may find interesting. Sure, why not? Mm. When I was younger, I sailed all the world seas as a navigator. Our world is huge, and this huge world is filled with an incredible profusion of Pokemon. Of all the Pokemon in the world, the one that I found to be the most interesting was Eevee. Now, Eevee is a unique Pokemon that can evolve into five different forms. Different kinds of Pokemon you see. Now it's eight, but splitting hairs. While I sailed, I studied Eevee quite exhaustively. As a result, I obtained five items that are the keys to Eevee's evolution. Oh? You said that you were raising an Eevee? What a fortuitous coincidence! This must have been meant to happen. Well, let me commemorate this occasion by giving you one of the five items. There's no need to be shy about it. Go ahead, choose one. Now, obviously, Water, Stone, Vaporeon, Electric, uh, Thunderstone, Jolteon, Firestone, Flareon, but... Since there is no day and night cycle in the game, if you want to get Espeon and Umbreon, you'll be given the Moon Shard or the Sun Shard, respectively. And then when your Eevee is sufficiently friendly enough, which, by the way, Eevee's base happiness at the beginning of the game is 215, and you only need, I think, 225 for uh, evolution via friendship to occur. So you can choose one of these two as well, but since I already decided, going with Vapo. Flareon's my favorite one, but... I actually like using Vaporeon more. But now that we have our precious water stone, give me Vaporeon. I'd have to say the only evolution I don't really like is Jolteon. Although that seems to be a fan favorite, and I'm not quite sure why. Most people apparently accentuate uh, uh, coolness factor over beauty in Pokemon. That's what I'm assuming, anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of Tackle for Water Pulse. And then, obviously, I'm going to get rid of Sand Attack for Ice Beam. Now, you can get Water Pulse pretty early. Get to the third of the uh, Mount Battle areas and you can get the Water Pulse as a reward. Maybe it's the second one, I can't remember. Um, but uh, as far as the other stuff, well... I lost my train of thought. Anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and call this the episode, the first episode of my Pokemon XDO Darkness Walkthrough. Thank you guys so much for watching and tuning in. Please, if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. Like and share this video with your friends to so let everyone know that this idiot is trying to make Pokemon videos and actually doing a pretty decent job about it. And until next time, I will see you guys then. ZDS, pulling out. That is not my outro. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody.